Where Rutherford focused on the nucleus, Niels Bohr focused on electrons. He found that electrons are found in energy levels, such that each energy level farther away from the nucleus has more and more energy at certain intervals. That is, electrons in energy level 2 have more energy than on energy level 1, and electrons in energy level 3 have more than electrons in energy level 2, and so on. Just like satellites orbiting the Earth, the more energy they have, the farther out their orbit is from the Earth. So electrons, the more energy they have, the farther they are from the nucleus. Niels Bohr postulated that should electrons gain or lose energy, they would lose energy according to the difference between the energy levels the electrons were in. And sure enough, it turns out to be mostly true. So if energy is added to an atom, and the electron jumps up an energy level, and then falls back down, the energy that is emitted is emitted in the form of a photon, with a certain frequency equal to the energy difference between the energy levels. It is this property that gives fireworks their colors. For this experiment, we will dissect a Roman candle and remove its stars, the little round balls of black powder and metallic salt. Because igniting a star would be hazardous and unpredictable, we will crush the stars into a pulverized powder. Finally completed, we will ignite the powder under controlled conditions in a fume hood. So the current theory is called the cloud model, where we're pretty sure we know where the electrons are most of the time, and then some of the time we're not sure exactly where that is. So it's mostly close to the nucleus. You can see the density is the strongest and the thickest near the nucleus where it's dark. And then as it spreads out from the nucleus, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter until eventually, you know, we just don't shade it in anymore because the electrons hardly there anymore. As you add more and more electrons per element, as you add more and more protons, uh, we, the trick is getting the electrons close to the nucleus anymore because the electrons are all negative and they all repel each other. And so they come up these strange orbital shapes. With each new orbital shape and layer and level more and more elaborate and difficult for the electron to get near the nucleus. So for an element like lithium with only three electrons, the orbital paths are fairly straightforward. 1s, 2s, just a circle of sphere within a sphere. For francium with 87 electrons, it can get quite complicated, such that you have all these layers crowding around the one nucleus and trying to fit in and in between their brothers. While the shapes are simple, sphere within a sphere within a sphere, it gets more complicated, like here in the p orbitals, you go beyond that to the d orbitals, and all these electrons are trying not to repel each other so much that they skip on out, but at the same time try and be close to the protons because they're attracted that way. So this is a picture of what we think the actual electron clouds look like, that is, where the electrons spend most of their time. Now if you were to plot them all out using the Schrodinger equation, they would look something like this. As you can see, the paths that the electrons hold to, or the space that they live in, gets radically different depending on what energy level they are on. And the reason they're on different energy levels is because an electron will stay at the energy level. It takes the, less energy, the least amount of energy for it to go into. So chemistry is really all about the energy, and it's really all about the electrons. So one of the most confusing things about learning electron configuration is why are the D-level electrons and the F-level electrons out of order? That is why the D is one behind 
and why are the f's two behind? And the reason for that is right here on this graph. You can see that it goes up with increasing energy. Well, it takes electrons less energy to go into the 3D shell than it does in the 4P shell. And that's really all it is. It's all about energy. What takes the least amount of energy? So you go 4S, 3D, then 4P. In the same way, that's why electrons go into these funny shapes as they all try to crowd around the one nucleus. What takes the least amount of energy? Well, it just so happens it's these shapes from S to P to D to F. These shapes are what the electrons take as they go around the nucleus or spend time around the nucleus. It takes the least amount of energy. And so it is how the electrons determine what the periodic table looks like. So why don't you pause this video and get out your periodic table that you colored. Now see if you can use it to answer these questions. Pause before going and finding the answers. Chlorine is element 17, right here. So we can work our way up, say, okay, we know there's 1 and 1s1 one and 1s2, so total is the 1s shell is filled with 2. 2s is filled, 2s2. 2p is filled, 2p6. 3s is filled, 3s2. And then we count 3p1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So sure enough, 3p5. And that gives us to element 17. So that's 5 plus 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 2 equals 17. Sure enough, we've accounted for all the electrons found in chlorine right here. Manganese, we should notice that it ends up in the fourth energy level when it's actually in the D sublevel. If you remember that D is one behind all the other levels, so we should say that it's in the 3D level. We should end up with 3D5 at the end. So we go through 1s1, 1s2, all full. 2s2, sure enough, we're there. 2p6, we have those electrons. Don't forget the 3s2s and the 3p6s. And sure enough, the 4s2. And in the 3D level, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3D5. So here is our complete configuration, electron configuration of manganese. Okay, barium's a little trickier as it's down here at the 6s2. So let's go backwards this time. So we know that the 6s shell is full and 6s2. And we know that the 5p shell is full at 5p6. And we know that the d shell is full. Remember, that is one behind, so that's 40, 10. 5s is full at 5s2. The 4p is full at 4p6. The d shell is once again full at 3d10. The 4s is full at 4s2. We know that the 3p is full, 3p6. 3s is full, 3s2. 2p is full, 2p6. 2s is full, 2s2. And 1s1, 1s2, so 1s2. The S shell on the first energy level is also full. Again, why don't you pause to see if you can answer it before looking at the answers. Okay, I like using the shorthand method for electron configuration as it's a lot faster and easier. So we're going to start with bromine, this element. And so what we're going to say is, all right, we know that bromine has all the same electrons that argon does. So we're just going to say right away, okay, it's got everything that argon has, plus 4s2, plus all the d's here, 3d10, and plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the p of the fourth energy level, 4p5. So that is the shorthand electron configuration for bromine. Okay, the next one is technetium. So it's right here. And sure enough, it's got all these electrons that are included in krypton. So we'll say krypton plus 5s2 plus 4d5. Whoop. Right there. And we have technetium. 
Okay, so radium is pretty easy, since it's right down here, just off of the normal gas. So we are going to say that it has all the same electrons that radon has. Boop, 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 boop. So radon plus two more, 7s2, and that's where they are. Shorthand, noble gas, electron configuration for radium. Once again, pause and see if you can answer this all by yourself. Okay, this one's easier, so this is 2p4, so that is oxygen. Next one is ending in 4s1, which is right there, and 4s1 says that's potassium. And the last one is 3d7. So we count over two, four, six, aha, right there. And that is element cobalt. So this is the easiest so far. Once again, pause to try to answer this on your own. Okay, this one, electrons in a 4S orbital, but not 3D. So that'd be these two and nothing afterwards. So those two are potassium and calcium. Okay, for this one, electrons in a partially filled 4D level. So 4D level is right here, and partially filled would take us all the way up to here. It would not include cadmium, because then it would be a fully filled 4D level. So that would include all of these elements. And last being silver. Ta-da!